Hello, hello, my friends. Today we are in the holiday spirit. Well, I'm in the holiday spirit, and I hope you will be too. So this is a page of my artwork. Yes, of course, it's a poinsettia, and we're going to paint this today. And guess what? I'm going to gift you a download of this artwork so you can print it out and literally paint with me. I'm going to be using the Art for Joy Sake brush. You know, the quarter-inch dagger that started it all. This is my baby. She's the queen bee. Many of you know I have a collection of books that are filled with pages of artwork like this that can be painted with watercolor. But so many of you have painted through all of those books. So I developed what I call the watercoloring page bundles that are available on christyrice.com. And there are quite a few bundles now. And this particular artwork is from the holiday bundle. So if you want to know more about that, take a look below in the information section and I have a link to those for sure. But don't forget, I am gifting you a download of this particular page. You can most likely print this out on a thinner watercolor paper right on your home printer. Now, as we're getting started here and you might be wondering, Christy, what do you mean you have books of watercoloring pages? I don't understand. Well, take a look at this video if you wanna get up to speed on what my books are all about. All right, I'm diving right in with a red. I'm going wet on dry, wet color on dry paper. And I added a bright red into that upper area, upper left, wet my brush, and I'm blending, blending out that color that I added. Getting a little more water on my brush, and look at, look at me bullying that color around. I call this technique flooding. It's a fabulous technique, and I do cover it in this video, pretty epic video, The Ultimate Guide to Beginner Watercolor. Take a look at that. And I'm repeating the process on this next petal. Now, apparently, I'm also losing my voice. Now, something to notice right away is that I did not repeat the same red that I started with. And you're probably like, Christy, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm using the tip of my brush here to dig into those little nooks and crannies. But yes, I used a pink. And that's the thing. When I'm painting a red flower, let's say, I'm not going into that red flower with the same one, two, or three colors the entire time. I am mixing it up. I'm using pinks, raspberries, purples, maybe even a little blue, a little orange here and there. And you'd be surprised. The result is still very much a red flower friends but it is not a boring red flower and that is always my goal how can I use color to its fullest in the most unexpected ways and the best way that I can tell you is to just pick up as many colors as you can within a family of colors so if you're doing reds do all the reds the pinks all the things and that keeps things so interesting okay Enough about that. I'm bullying around the color here a little bit. Now, friends, my goal here today is for you to have about a half hour moment of peace. And I call it a moment because let's face it, a half hour in our day isn't too terribly much, but you're probably like, Christy, are you kidding? A half hour is like everything. I get that. I get that. But the thing is at the end of this half hour, specifically, I think 26 minutes is the length of this video you will have a finished eight by 10 piece of artwork. It will be complete. It will be one layer. There won't be la layers and layers of detail and shadows and all the things. But I promise you friends, the result with this one layer of color that you've committed to laying down on this page, the commitment to joy, this 26 minutes that you've decided to gift yourself today will yield something spectacular with very little effort. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, enough of that. I'm continuing on here, friends. Now I'm at the point where I've got three very, very juicy petals with lots of color going on. So as I decide kind of the next steps I'm gonna take on this painting, I have to think about that. Now I'm still bullying around the color and that's the magic of this type of technique where the whole painting, it's one layer, one and done. The magic is getting a lot of pigment on the page, wet on dry, very quickly realizing you're in a wet on wet situation as you add more color or water and just pushing that color and water around. Here's a peek at some of the other pages in this particular holiday watercoloring page bundle that you can get on christyrice.com. There is the cookie page, there is the ornament page, and then of course the poinsettia. I just love this cookie page. My mom and I make anise cookies every year. It's like a family recipe. We've all got them, right? And this page reminds me of 
the anise cookies that we make. We, we um, frost them and we sugar them and they just look like watercolor magic in sugar. And I, I just love this, this bundle. There are a bunch more bundles available. There's different florals, there's fruits, there's a landscape bundle. I love these. And you get three artwork pieces in each bundle, but they're printed on two different pages and you're getting all different types of watercolor paper printed uh, with artwork in these bundles. So it's fantastic. Anyway, enough about that. Continuing on, I'm just starting to think about where I want to move next. Um, and just a reminder of the brush that I'm using, the quarter inch dagger. She's my baby. She can do it all. I am not using a single other brush in this video. Now, my creative instinct right now is telling me continue on this beautiful flower, but the reality of it is, is I did a little bit of a creative faux pas here. I started right in the middle of the page, so if I were to go over all the way to the left, I'm going to get paint on my hand. There's a good chance. So I need to calm myself down, take a beat on this flower, and I'm going to go work over here on this leaf because I know that there is danger, danger if I don't do that. So part of this creative journey is just knowing where the pitfalls are Making mistakes, yes, but planning around your mistakes. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm laying down some water with the curved edge of the brush. Yep, this is just a great way to enter into a wet on wet situation where you wet your area first and then boom, 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 dabbing color. And you know what I'm gonna say, grab a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different greens. Look at that, a purple, even a little blue. And let those colors start to blendy blend on the page. Friends, that's my new phrase. I don't know where it came from, but I've been saying it on TikTok and now it's on YouTube. Blendy blend. So much of the wow factor of watercolor is just letting it do its thing once it's in the water on the page. We have to just step back and marvel at what it's going to do. So that's what I'm doing here with this leaf. Friends, if you're having a good time, I would love it if you give this video a boop, which is basically just a thumbs up. That lets the YouTube algorithm know that we are having a blast and it makes sure that other people see and get in on the fun that we're having. So, and if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd like to say hello, welcome, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I really don't want you to miss a thing. We have a good time here. Now I'm continuing on filling in the greens, having fun with that. Friends, I'm just grabbing the first green that I see on my palette. I am using my Mission Gold palette today. My Mission Gold palette is a large palette. It's got over 40 pigments. It might be over 50 by this point. Um, but I just grab what I see. I grab what, what speaks to me as my eyes gaze over at that palette. I don't spend a lot of time, you know, mulling over the color palette. Uh, the thing I love about this brush, friends, is you're going to be using most often the curved edge of the brush or the tip. And depending on the angle at which you hold the brush, uh, let's just say if you've got your tip pointing down almost perpendicular, you're going to be able to get really tiny lines and you're going to be able to get into those nooks and crannies of these leaves, for example, super easily. Look at what I'm doing here. I've laid down color, but then almost immediately picked some of it up. That's a lifting technique. Friends, again, I'm going to reference my recent video, The Ultimate Guide to Beginner Watercolor, because I go over all of these techniques in detail, and I don't want you to miss out on that video, so check it out. Lifting is something that I used almost as often as wet on dry and wet on wet, which I call wowed. Lifting is fantastic. It gives you almost instant highlights and shadows without too much effort. Now there's something subtle that I am gonna make happen here that I think is really important to talk about. Friends, when you're painting like this, I know it can be your desire and your instinct to wanna to control everything, to wanna to stay in the lines, to wanna make sure that your red doesn't bleed into your green. But friends, let me tell you, there are some beautiful happy accident wow moments waiting for you when you let that happened. Did you see what I did there? I went right up next to that red point setup with my green, knowing full well that I was going to touch the two areas together and it was going to create a little bit of explosion of red into my green. And you know what? I let it happen because I knew it was going to be fun. And the reality is if I didn't like it and it wasn't fun, I could take a clean brush and push that red back from whence it came and it would all be back to better and normal. But I took the risk and I love the result. So I want you to keep that in mind. Keep me in your head. Keep me in your head. Take the risk and see if it's worth it. It usually is. And I tell you what, usually are really good creative odds, at least for me. 
So give it a try. Now I'm going into these. I'm deciding these are berries. These very well could be smaller silver dollar eucalyptus, but I'm calling them berries today. And I felt like a lovely touch of blue would be really beautiful here. Now again, don't want you to stress out over how you're deciding your color palette for a particular painting. When I first started this, all I knew is I wanted a big, bold red poinsettia to be my focal point. I didn't know I was gonna do blue berries. Um, and I really don't know what I'm gonna do next with these other small poinsettias that are going on elsewhere in the composition. So don't be too hard on yourself to make all of the color decisions before you even start, because honestly, that's heavy and it can feel heavy and it can prevent you from starting. Now there's something I wanna point out. Let's look back at that leaf, that big old leaf right there in the middle that I had to work on so that I didn't smudge up my beautiful red poinsettia. Look at how the blendy blend took off on its own. You re if you remember, I did not push that color around too much. I dab, dab, dabbed pigment into the wet page. I pushed it around a little bit with a clean brush but then I let it be and look at what it did on its own. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. So let that be an example and a reminder to you that you need to surrender a bit to watercolor because it's got beautiful things in store for you. All right, just in that hot minute I was talking, I think I decided I wanna do, have you seen those poinsettias in the grocery stores or at like Home Depot or Lowe's um, that are just the most gorgeous peachy color? They're almost ivory, but they've got a tinge of peach. That's what I want. So I'm starting by laying down a soft pink. My palette has a pre-mixed, um, I've heard people call them convenience colors. I think that's just cute. So I have a convenience pastel pink that I'm using right from my palette. If you don't have a pastel pink, go ahead, take a little bit of red. And if you've got white watercolor, mix them together. If you don't have white watercolor, just take your red and water it down. And then I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the center of the poinsettia and pushing that yellow out from the center into each petal. Then taking a little bit of clean water here and doing that pushing, that flooding, bossing that color around. And I'm not gonna do it too much. I'm not gonna over boss the color because I know that it's gonna blend. I know that gravity and the air circulating in the room is going to let the watercolor do its thing. And look what we have, the most glorious, beautiful peach poinsettia. I love it so much, friends, that I'm gonna repeat that on this next one. And look at how fast I'm laying down that pink color. I'm using the curved edge of the brush. I'm paying attention to the angle at which I'm holding the brush so that I can just do one or two strokes in each petal and be done done so that I can get right into adding the yellow and pushing that yellow into the pink. Knowing full well as they start pushing the yellow color that starts at the center of this point poinsettia, as I start pushing that yellow into the pink, any areas that aren't perfectly filled in are going to become filled in. They're gonna become more evolved. So I don't have to worry about making sure that my first color laid down is so perfectly placed. Hey friends, so I hope you're still with me. Are you having a good time? I hope you're not getting tired of hearing me wax poetic about watercolor, because you know what? I am so loved with watercolor. I could talk about it all day. I really, I could, I could. Anywho, remember, head down below to the information section of this upload because you are going to get a free download of this page. And most likely you're gonna be able to print this on a thinner watercolor paper right at home in your home printer. If not, take it out to like a Kinko's. Is Kinko's even a thing anymore? I don't know, and get it printed. I'm painting in some leaves here. I started with like an olive green. If you don't have a pre-mixed olive green, it's gonna be whatever green you have mixed with a little bit of yellow, maybe a little smidge of brown, you've got it, you're golden. And then I went right over top with like a turquoisey kind of bluish green. Again, it's a pre-mixed color from my Mission Gold set and added that in and let it mingle, mingle, blendy blend, see what happens. Pull back some of the color with a clean dry brush. I wanna, remind you of something and this might blow your mind right here when you are painting in this way and you've got a lot of pigment on the page you've got a lot of water on the page you may notice i still have some some kind of subtle low grade puddles on my page here by all means don't feel like you always have to go back to your palette to grab color for the next area of your painting go and grab color from another area where there's a puddle grab the color and the and the the water from that area and paint with it elsewhere. You're gonna get 
um, a beautiful, softer, lighter, more sheer version of a color that's already on the page. It's like color theory for dummies. Now, I'm not calling you a dummy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so let me put it to you a different way. A lot of beginners worry profusely about color mixing. It stresses them out to no end. And I don't want that for you. So if you've already laid down a lot of color on your page and you like the way it's looking and you have puddles that need tending to anyway, why not take a clean dry brush, scoop up some of those puddles and use that color that you love that's already working on the page elsewhere on the page. So it's less decisions you have to make about color and about mixing. Okay, back to the painting. I had to get a super, super bright pink in here. It just felt right with this composition and with what I've got going on with color. So I'm doing it, doing it, doing it. Now, friends, bright, bright pinks, almost fluorescent pinks are not something that you can mix. I'm just gonna say it, they're just not. You need to grab yourself a convenience tube of a bright pink. Every brand has one, it's opera pink, opera rose, um, anything like that is gonna be a bright, bright pink or a fluorescent pink even can work. Don't drive yourself nuts trying to mix that color because you can't. All right, so you might be wondering like, Christy, you're not talking a lot about techniques today. And the thing is, I'm not. I'm talking about philosophy and mindset and funny things and being a goofball. But the reason is this, because I am using a few very simple techniques throughout this entire painting. And that's the beauty of it. And my point right now, I want you to have a light bulb moment, creative light bulb moment, is that you can sink into a painting session and not worry about every move you make, every stroke you put down, every pigment you decide to pick up on your brush, every technique you decide to implement. You don't have to worry about those things. If you keep it simple, two or three techniques, so I've done wet on wet, wet on dry, and I've done a lot of flooding and a little bit of lifting. That's it. And I'm repeating that over and over again across this eight, to eight by 10 page, over and over again. So I'm able to wax poetic. My brain can wander elsewhere. I can have fun with you, my friends here today, and not worry about my words because it's easy and it feels friendly and comfortable. So that's what I want this painting session to be about for you. I want to remind you of how you can just sink into an experience if you keep it simple. Keep the technique simple. Keep the approach simple. All right, it's time. I'm going back to the big poinsettia, starting with the red up there at the tip, grabbing a pink, right, going right underneath with it, and just starting to blendy blend out and out and out and seeing what happens. Gorgeous. I love that little ombre from red to pink, adding a little water in, pushing it around. That's the flooding technique. Push it back, push it back to get a little bit of highlight going on. Don't overwork it. And my pressure here, friends, is super light. My pressure throughout this entire painting has been incredibly, incredibly light. Going in with the curved edge of my brush, I have a little bit of red on my brush from before, and I'm filling in these teeny tiny center petals of the poinsettia, not getting too precious about it, letting the color be pretty sheer. Adding in a little bit of a dark, dark red that I have on my palette. If you don't have a pre-mixed dark red, I want you to just use what red you have with a little bit of green and you'll be golden, just a little bit of green. And look at that, beautiful shadows. If it's too much, you feel like you added too much of a particular color in area, just go in with a clean, dry, slightly damp brush and lift out some of that color and blot on your paper towel. All right, are we still having fun, friends? Here, if you are, give this video a boop if you haven't already, and let others on YouTube know that they should watch this and have a good time with us. Thanks so much. Continuing on here, adding in some more of my blueberries soon as I finish up this poinsettia. Friends, I just want to mention something since, again, we're in this kind of easy breezy, casual moment of our painting. We're repeating these techniques and loving it. I wanna mention something about this time of year. And if you're watching this and it's like the spring, just know that this can apply to your creative journey any time of year. But particularly at the holidays, and I'm experiencing this myself, the holidays are insanity. Even if you don't celebrate Christmas or all the different things, end of year stuff is heavy. Not to mention we're gathering more with friends and family. 
and all of the stuff, all of the the strained relationships, all of the the hard stuff that has come out come up throughout the year, it rears its head especially this time of year. So why do I say all this? You're like, "Christy, this isn't a psych channel." No, I know. But here's the thing. Watercolor can be your calm, it can be your reverie, it can be your peace. And I give you permission during this crazy season of your life to take these moments for yourself. You are allowed to take this moment, even if you don't have the 26 minutes to sit with this full eight by 10, cut it in half, make it a five by seven, make it a four by six, give yourself five minutes, give yourself 10 minutes. I don't care how much time you give yourself during the busiest of seasons, but I give you permission to, in fact, give yourself the time. You need it. We need it. Okay. Promise? <laughs> All right. I'm wrapping up this center focal point, poinsettia with a wet on dry, just adding in pigment, keeping it simple. Friends, this poinsettia is beautiful and juicy, and it's still wet. So remember, when your page is wet, it's the opportunity. If the page is wet, you can go in and add some super dramatic dark moments. If the page is wet, you can add in different colors. If it's a red petal, primarily, you can go in and drop in a little bright pink and add some zing. If the page is wet or damp, you can still add in clean water. If you've got some areas that don't feel like they've blended nicely, a drop of clean water on top of a funky area is going to give you a nice blendy blend. So remember, keep an eye on, keep a creative eye on what areas of your painting are still wet or damp and you can still love on them and zhuzh and have your fun with them. Now things got a little tricky when stuff starts to dry, but you know what? We don't have to worry about that in this painting because we're just doing one layer and getting out and feeling calm and feeling like we took a big old half hour long deep breath. Right? Right. All right, continuing on with the blues. I've transitioned to more of a purple over here, which I think is fun, love, love, love. These last few moments of a painting that you're really in love with are so exciting, aren't they? It's, it's just such a fun experience to have spent time painting and really love the whole process. And I wish that for you with this page. Remember to get your download down below so you can paint right along with me. Now, I think I'm going to finish off this last little poinsettia as a peach one because, you know, I just super obsessed with that fun technique with the, the yellows and the pinks and turning these little these little babies into peach poinsettias. Finishing up the leaf here. See, again, I'm doing some lifting, a little bit of flooding, and that's how I've gotten this gorgeous, juicy quality to this painting. If I could tell you one technique that characterized the the look that i've gotten here it's wet on wet adding in really intense bold colors while the page is wet and then lifting those two techniques have been key in this particular session love it going in to finish this leaf i think my brush was a little dirty but that's okay no worries Pulling out some color. See, that lifting technique is integral. I call it push and pull. You push color onto the page, and then with lifting, you pull it back off and see what happens. Okay, starting to wrap up here. Now, I do want to show you, I've, I've got my eye on this area up here where the red is really spilling into the green, and I'm not loving it so much. So clean dry brush or clean damp brush, and just push that red back. Push it back a couple of times. As you're pushing it back with your brush, you are picking up some pigment and moisture and just dab that away on a paper towel. And before you know it, what was once out of control is just a soft blend. So just a little trick for you. You can use that again and again. And we're gonna start wrapping up with this yet another peach, beautiful peach poinsettia. I love this so much. Friends, I hope you've had as good of a time as I have with this. And I just want to remind you again that you deserve this time. If you've watched this through and you haven't painted with me or if you've just been listening, because I found out recently that some of y'all just listen to these to these sessions, which I think is so fun. Anyway, but if you're just, if you've got that tickle in your soul and you're like, I really want to try this, then head down below, print out that download, just print it on a thinner watercolor paper 
anything that says watercolor paper will do and give this a go. Start at the beginning and paint right along with me. All right, friends, thanks for being here with me. If you like this style of painting, check out this video. You're going to love it. Happy painting.